The next step in deriving the global SFS matrix of a truss element is to expand the, the local SFS matrix into a 4x4 matrix. So we had a uh, discretized truss element like this. We had the local coordinate system shown in blue with the hat on top of X and Y. And we had the global coordinate system, capital X and capital Y, shown in red. And the two coordinate systems are at angle theta. We drew the free body diagrams and showed the null of forces and displacements, and we found the transformation matrix that would transform the local forces and no local displacements into global forces and global displacements. So although we said that in the truss analysis, we won't have F1Y and F2Y, basically for nodes we don't have shear forces and we won't have transverse displacements like d1y is equal to d2y is equal to zero and same is true for moments and rotations but when you want to convert that into the global coordinate system then we will have a f1y and f2y or d1y and d2y though we will still not have the rotations and moments but in the global coordinate system we will have forces in the y direction as well in order to be able to use the transformation matrix it's necessary to expand our local coordinate system or our local stiffness matrix into a 4x4 matrix like this but how do I do that the first thing is that I put two zeros in my vector of nodal forces. So this is a vector for nodal forces and this is a vector for nodal displacements. If I write it here and I've just put two zeros here so that's a zero and that's a zero. Now I have F1x1 which could be a value F1y1 which is zero in the local coordinate system F2x1, which is a value, could be also 0. And F2y1, which is always 0 because we don't consider transfer forces in the local coordinate system. And same is true for D1x1, D, D1y1. So we have put that here. We have put four, two zeros to make it a 4x1 vector here. And this is also a 4x1 vector. So F1x1 is equal to EA over L D1X1 minus D2X1 so in this matrix the coefficient of D1X1 should be 1 and the coefficient of D2X1 should be negative 1 so let me change the color of the pen so it becomes a clear a little bit more clear this line or this column would be the coefficients of d1x1 in that vector this one would be the coefficient of d1y1 this is the coefficient of d2x1 and this is the coefficient of d2y1 so for f1x1 I have the coefficient of d1x1 is 1 there is no coefficient for d1y1 so it's 0 and the coefficient of d2x1 is minus 1 and again there is no coefficient for d2y1 so I write 1 0 minus 1 0 for f2x1 it would be negative d1x1 the coefficient would be that so let me just rewrite the equation here f2x1 is equal to ea over l d2x1 minus d1x1 so the coefficient of d1x1 is minus 1 so I write here multiply by that the coefficient of d1y1 is 0 and the coefficient of d2x1 is 1 which I put it here and there's no coefficient for d2y1 and because the forces and displacements in local y are 0 I just put four zeros in here to find the expanded uh, uh, local stiffness matrix of a single truss element which again is a 4 by 4 
matrix. So if I move on here from the local coordinate system, we had this no local nodal forces. So this is forces and nodal forces, and this is the nodal displacement, and this is the local stiffness matrix. So let me just write local stiffness matrix. And then these are the relationships that we found for the local and global forces and displacements. Now all I have to do is to plug in these into that equation. So if I put F here and D here, I will have transformation matrix times global forces is equal to local stiffness matrix times transformation matrix times displacements. If I change the color of the pen to clarify again, we learned that the transformation matrix is a four by four matrix. And this one is a four by one. So it's gonna give us a four by one vector in the global current system. This is a four by four matrix, the local stiffness matrix. Transformation is again a four by four and the displacement is four by one. Together, they're gonna to give me a four by one vector. So if I bring this local, this transformation matrix here, I can rewrite the equation like this. The inverse of transformation matrix times the local coordinate or local stiffness matrix of a truss element times the transformation matrix multiplied by the global or uh, this nodal displacements gives me the global nodal forces. So this would give me the global stiffness matrix of a truss element. But the stiffness or, or the transformation matrix is a orthogonal matrix. And what does that mean? It means that if I multiply its transverse by itself, it's going to give me an identity or a unit matrix. And we know that this is actually a feature or a property of the inverse of a matrix. So if you can multiply inverse of a matrix by itself, it gives me an identity matrix. That means for an orthogonal matrix, like the transformation matrix we found before, the inverse and the transverse of the matrix are equal. So we can rewrite that equation in this format. The, local, the global nodal forces is equal to the transverse of the transformation matrix times the local stiffness matrix of the truss element times the transformation matrix times global nodal forces. And hence, we found that this would be the global stiffness matrix for a single truss element as shown in here. So we found the equation to write the, to find the uh, global stiffness matrix of a single truss element.